In this video, we are going to talk about the non-inverting amplifier. In the previous video, we talked about the voltage follower. And we'll look at that again because the non-inverting amplifier is the next step in operational amplifiers. So here is our standard operational amplifier. Our non-inverting input, our inverting input, and our output. And let's take a quick look at the voltage follower because that simply comes back to our inverting input. And recall how that works. Let's say we put uh, plus uh, 2.5 volts here. The op amp is going to make the output voltage whatever it takes to make the two input voltages equal. So assuming everything is balanced, these voltages will be equal. So the question is, what voltage on the output will make that voltage 2.5 volts? And since it's directly connected, the output will be plus 2.5 volts. To make this a non-inverting amplifier, we need to add a voltage divider to the feedback network. With that connected to ground. Let's make them two equal resistors. So here is a voltage divider on the feedback loop. It's a series circuit from the output back to ground. You may look at this leg and say, wait a second, that's a parallel circuit because there's more than one current path. But remember that there's virtually no current flowing into the op amp, so there's no current path here at all. There's only one current path that is from the output through the voltage divider to ground. In this circuit, conventional current is flowing this direction, which we need to know to understand what happens in this voltage divider. The question is, what is the voltage on the output? What voltage here will give us two and a half volts there? And if you remember our voltage divider exercises, we have the same problem as the find the mystery voltage. Let's find out what that mystery voltage is. If we start out here, we see that we have zero volts here because that's ground will always be zero volts. And we have gained going across this resistor, two and a half volts. So what's the voltage between here and here? 2.5 volts. So we have a series circuit, two equal resistors, they must have the same voltage. So another 2.5 volts. So 2.5 volts here, 2.5 volts there. So from here we started at zero and we gained two and a half volts. We have to continue gaining because we're going the same direction. We're going against the conventional current, therefore we must be gaining in voltage. So by the time we get here, we've gained another 2.5 volts. We start here, 0, 2.5 volts, another 2.5 volts. So by the time we get here, we're at plus 5 volts. So the output voltage will be plus 5 volts. So we see that we now have a gain of 2. We put 2.5 volts in we get 5 volts out. The formula for this circuit is going to be our voltage gain is equal to 1 plus, and let's label these resistors, R2, R1, R2 divided by R1. So we take the ratio of these two resistors and add 1 and we get the gain. So the ratio here is a 1 to 1 ratio, so that's a ratio of 1 plus 1 gives us a gain of 2. Let's take a look at what happens if we change this resistor. Let's make that 2 times. Get rid of these voltages because they are going to change. So once again, the voltage on the output is going to change to whatever it takes to make the two input voltages equal. So this voltage has not changed. Nothing has changed in this part of the circuit. The only thing that has changed is the voltage on the output and the amount of current flowing through it. So what do we have? We have zero volts here, two and a half volts here. We have gained two and a half volts, but now we have twice the resistance in a series circuit. If we have twice the resistance, we have twice the voltage. So if we have 2.5 volts across a 10K resistor, we are going to have 
5 volts across the 20k resistor. So we start at 0 and we gain 2.5 volts. We continue to gain, but now we gain 5 volts. So we've gone from 0 all the way up to plus 7.5 volts. So our output will be plus 7.5 volts. So now we have a gain of 3. We put in 2.5 and, and we got 7.5 volts out. If this resistor is twice that resistor, our gain will be 3. So if they're the same, we get a gain of 2. If this one is twice the size, we get a gain of 3. What do you think it'll be if we have a resistor here that's three times the size of that one? We will have a gain of 4. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at that. Let's make this 30K. We raise our voltages and see what happens. Nothing has happened over here. So we have 2.5 volts across 10K. We will have since this resistor is three times the size of that resistor, we'll have three times the voltage, so 2.5 volts. Multiply that by three, we have 7.5 volts. So now we start with zero, we gain two and a half volts, we gain 7.5 volts more, which will put this at 10 volts. So our output is going to be 10 volts. So if this is a three to one ratio, we have a gain of 4. Except we don't. Has anyone caught the problem with this circuit? This voltage cannot reach that voltage. The best we're going to do is about maybe 9.5 volts. So let's take a look at what's happened to this circuit. This is important for troubleshooting. This is uh, a, a common scenario. This is really only going to be about plus 9.5 volts because it can't reach that. What's that going to do to our circuit? Well, it's going to unbalance the entire thing. So this at 9.5 volts, we look at our voltage divider. Well, let's see, we've got a, a 3 to 1 ratio, which means we have to divide that number by 4, which is going to give us only 2.38 volts across this resistor here with the remainder across that resistor. So this ends up being plus 2.38 volts. And you might think that there's something wrong with this op amp. One thing I experienced in the field is that a lot of engineers get it stuck in their mind that these voltages will always be equal. Now I'm sure that wouldn't happen to Dave Jones or Big Clive, but I worked with a lot of uh, engineers fresh out of college who had it ingrained in their mind that if the op amp is working, these two voltages will always be equal. Well, if we look at this circuit, we see that those voltages are not equal, but the op amp is doing exactly what it's designed to do. It's gone as far as it can here. It cannot get this voltage high enough to bring this all the way up to 2.5 volts. So we have a saturated circuit here. Uh, what can we do about that? Well, there's three things we can do to this circuit to make it work at, under, the, under these parameters. One, we could limit the input. So if we limit this to 2 volts, now let's take a look at what happens. This we expect to be plus 2 volts. We have a 3 to 1 ratio, so we expect this to have a gain of 4, so we expect this to be plus 8 volts. And look at our numbers, 2 volts here, 6 volts there, total of 8 volts. Now the circuit is within its parameters, it's not saturated, and we see now we do have a gain of 4, 3 to 1 ratio, gain of 4, the amplifier is doing what it should. The other possibility would be to simply limit the gain of the amplifier. The other solution to the problem, let's go back to our problem we had. So there is the problem we had. The circuit was saturated, so we had reached our voltage limit here and our inputs were not balanced, but we could solve this problem by increasing our supply voltage.
This is about as far as you go. Uh, it depends on the op amp, but most op amps I've worked with have a maximum range across the plus to minus voltage of 30 volts or 32 volts. This is about as far as we can go. But now you can see that we can get all the way to 10 volts here. Which means this can get all the way to plus 2.5 volts. So 2.5 volts here. And here we will have 7.5 volts for a total of 10 volts. And our circuit is working as we expect. So there is your... So there is your so, so there is your non-inverting amplifier. So for a quick review, we have our non-inverting amplifier where we simply put a voltage divider on the feedback network of the operational amplifier. If these two resistors are equal, we will have a gain of two. If there is a two to one ratio, we will have a gain of three. If it's a three to one ratio, we will have a gain of four. And so in this case, we have a gain of 2, so whatever voltage I put here, let's put in minus 3.6 volts on the input. Well, what we expect is that the output voltage will be whatever it takes to make this minus 3.6 volts. And let's see what that is. Once again, this will be 0 volts. This will be minus 3.6 volts. So it means between, across this resistor, we lost... 3.6 volts. Now we are losing voltage. The conventional current is flowing this direction into the output. So as we go we will lose voltage because we're going in the direction of conventional current. So our voltage went down 3.6 volts. We will, since these two resistors are equal we will lose another 3.6 volts. So we start with zero. We lose 3.6 volts. We lose another 3.6 volts. That's minus 7.2 volts. So our output will be minus 7.2 volts. So whatever voltage we put in here, we will have twice the voltage here and the same sign on our on our output. So that is your op amp non-inverting amplifier. In the next video we're going to take a look at the inverting amplifier.